Due to popular demand, and because there's a new Star Trek show coming out, today I'm gonna build the Doomsday Machine. I said that way too upbeat. Today I'm gonna build the Doomsday Machine. That's a little bit better. The Doomsday Machine was a robotic warship designed by an ancient spacefaring civilization as the ultimate weapon to destroy planets and consume the debris for fuel. Sort of a clunky analogy for nuclear weapons. It's subtle social commentary, but <laughs> that's mid-century sci-fi for you. The writers were not at all happy with the final design of the filming model, as they had originally envisioned a massive Yamato-esque warship bristling with phaser cannons and point defense weapons, essentially a conical Death Star. Unfortunately, the budget only allowed for a windsock dipped in concrete. And that's how dreams are shattered and TV history is made. Here we go. For this build, I use EVA foam, a styrofoam cone, toothpicks, wood, hot glue, foil, paint, cutting tools, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. First I cut the styrofoam cone into segments by making diagonal cuts. Using a sort of half hacksaw here. This is way overkill. You could use a steak knife. The trick is to glue them back together deliberately misaligned. So like each one at an offset angle. Hot glue takes a really long time to cool with styrofoam, the foam being an insulator. So these are gonna be held together with toothpicks and the hot glue is just there to keep it from coming back apart. This is two segments too short. So I made the tail segment out of skewers arranged like a teepee with a few extra toothpicks all around just to help fill it out. I also added a dab of hot glue then I used my work knife to shave down the sides a bit. With that complete, I was able to move on to the forwardmost segment. I made that out of scrap craft foam cut from a roll, which you can get at craft stores. I glued that on. It came out a little bit too cylindrical, so I widened it by cutting darts and adding shims. This gives it more of a conical shape. I put a circular piece of foam in the center to help hold it in place. Although I still wasn't totally confident in its durability because you know, hot glue. So I wrapped it in duct tape. Then I cut a circle out of the middle of the inside to hold the lighting element, which I'll install later. I revisited the tail and lengthened it a little bit more and now it was ready to be textured. There are a lot of rumors about the prop and costume design of the original series Star Trek show. And many are true because it was a low budget show. Most notably the high tech medical scanning gadgets are actually just salt shakers and the dilithium crystal are shampoo bottles, things like that. However, there's so many of these that some are total fabrications. For instance, the phasers are not glue guns, I promise. And following that logic, I honestly believe that the whole windsock dipped in concrete story is a total myth because it looks like they built it the same way they made cave walls by creating a chicken wire shape and then covering that with heavy duty aluminum foil. I mean, look at how big this thing was in real life. I just don't see thinly cured concrete holding up to gravity with only one or two attachment points. So sticking with tradition, I covered it in aluminum foil. Now that the texture is taken care of, it's time to paint. I start with a base layer of gray filler primer. It dries pretty quickly, so I moved on to blue. That was way too blue, so I waited a few days for that to dry. It being gloss paint, it takes a little bit longer to dry. And then I gave it an uneven dusting of gray filler. When that was dry, I put an electric candle in the middle of the maw to simulate the lighting effect. I also made a stand out of wood and painted it flat black. And now to complete the scene, here's a little model Enterprise. Thanks for watching this mini build. Hope you enjoyed it. I find these mini builds to be kind of therapeutic for me. Yeah, it's nice to break up the larger builds with these quick projects. If the more elaborate builds are your thing though, and you want to see more of them, be sure to head on over to the Patreon page because that's the only way those projects happen. Be sure to leave a comment below to let me know what you'd like to see me make next. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting. See you later.